All right, so what I'm about today is so that we can understand polar bonds, nonpolar bonds, polar molecules, and nonpolar molecules. I've been doing this a long time. The gray hair and lack of it shows that. And I notice that students every year, why is that funny? Why? Okay. Okay, I've been doing this long enough to know that students always do this. When I say, hey, is this polar? And they say, okay, yeah, it's polar. And I always say, polar what? Am I talking about the bond or am I talking about the molecule? Are there some inferences? Are they tied together? Yes, they are, but they are different. So if I ever ask you, is this polar? I want you to finish the question, Mr. Grotsky, polar bond or molecule? Because if you know the difference, you fully understand this. In bonding, this is the hardest part of it all. Now, first thing I will say, my friends who are building my ionic crystal here, thank you, okay? Ionic compounds make crystals, and you should know why. If I become positive because I lose an electron, I'm positive in all directions, which means I can attract a negative in all directions. So if I'm a negative ion, which is the bigger ion, I'm going to attract positive ions in all directions. And eventually, you'll build what we call a crystal lattice. And the chemical form of a crystal lattice is the lowest ratio of the ions. That's ionic. Now, an ionic compound can't be polar. Why not? In fact, asking if this is polar, bond or molecule, is like asking the number five its marital status. Doesn't make any sense. Numbers don't get married, they don't date. Okay, they don't go on farmersonly.com, okay? <laughs> you don't have to, I don't know why it's on tip of my tongue, okay? <laughs> Are there other dot coms like that? I don't know. I mean, is there mechanics.com? Is there, uh, <laughs> I've never thought about that. What's that? It's just so you don't get messed up with those city folks. <laughs> Any case, so asking this crystal if it is polar, is, does it make any sense? It's non-applicable. This can't be polar because the ions are locked in a fixed position. These ions can't move to one side. If they could, you'd have a negative and positive sign. But because the positives and negatives are equally interdispersed in the crystal, in the ionic compound, we don't ever talk polar or nonpolar with ionic compounds, only with covalent. So when you hear polar bond or nonpolar bond, we're in the land of covalent. Sometimes you'll see polar covalent bond. It's not necessary because you don't talk about polar or nonpolar with ionic. But you can hear polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. So as we did yesterday, stepping back, let's start with something that is a nonpolar bond first. Okay? And you should know this. If I take hydrogen, here's my big H, and it has one valence electron, and I take another H, another hydrogen with another valence electron. We know now that both of these are now stable low energy because they're both sharing two. And two electrons fills the first energy level. So they're just like a noble gas. But think about the rope. Me and Kara having a tug of war. When it was nonpolar, I'm sorry, when it was nonmetals and nonmetals pulling on the rope, nobody was strong enough to pull the rope away. When it was ionic, I snatched the rope away from Kara. Why? Because I was a non-metal. I was more electronegative and working out. That's right. Okay? Bro, okay, I'm the meathead version of Mr. Grotsky. I'm all about commercials today. All right? But the point being is that this can't be polar. Ionic compounds have a transfer. Here, they're forced to shear. But in this case, they both have the same strength. If me and my evil twin, Mongo, genetically identical. Okay, if you didn't know they cloned me. All right, we have the same workout schedule, same genetics, and we're pulling on a rope. No one would win the tug of war. The rope would be shared right down the line. So we call this a nonpolar covalent bond. And you identify it because it's the same nonmetal. Electronegativity of this is 2.2. This is 2.2. When you subtract the electronegativity, you get a zero. That means they have the same strength or attraction for electrons, same electronegativity. They have to share equally. Is that understood? Now, you can, you can identify nonpolar covalent bonds by noticing that it's always the same what? Nonmetal bond. 
Let me help you. Is this a non, where am I? Is this a nonpolar covalent bond? How about this? How about Cl2? Does that have a nonpolar covalent bond in it? Two Cl's bonded. Each Cl has the same electronegativity. Yes. How about I draw I2? Yes. What do we call these guys that bond to themselves? They're called diatomic. All the diatomic ions. Is, does this have a nonpolar covalent bond? F2. And now we're f around. Yeah. These all are the same. Now, what makes them nonpolar? What does polar mean? Well, polar actually means differences. You have the what? The mild mannered Mr. Rock. Even keel. Never raises his voice. And then he's crazy! Okay, hopefully not. Now, that's polarity. I was acting one way and acting the other. Some people never change, and we would say they're not polar. Some people have polar what? Personalities. Now, bipolar means you may have a mental disorder where you may have really different personalities. I'm not suggesting that, okay? But the point being is um, I have, or I gave you an example of polarity. It's differences. But look, here is the pair of electrons. Is there any difference compared to each, each one of these two field in the same way? That means that no one side has more of the electrons in the bond. I'm talking about the bond than another. This H feels that pair the same as this H. So there's no difference, no polarity. I'm still talking about the bond. Now, what if I give you an example of a polar bond? What would that be like? What would a polar bond look like? If nonpolar is sharing equally, polar is what? Sharing unequally. Check out this. Here's H with its one valence electron. And here's chlorine. I'll do this better. I'm exaggerating this so you see it. Here is chlorine. Now chlorine has seven valence electrons. We should be able to do this already. Hydrogen has one. I'll make it blue. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm talking about the bond. Polar what? I'm talking about the bond here between the two atoms. Nothing else. Because this one is more electronegative, right around 3.2, this is 2.2. They're both high in terms of their strength, okay? So when they pull on the rope, nobody's strong enough to pull the rope away, so they're forced to share. Now, because this one's a little more stronger, maybe even my evil twin Mongo worked out more than I did, so he's gonna pull the rope what? I'm the evil twin Mongo, I'm standing here. He's gonna pull the rope closer. This pair has been pulled closer. Now we have differences. This side of the bond right here feels the what? The electron pair more. This side right here feels the electron pair less. So we give this side of the bond a partial negative sign. Not completely negative, because negative means you gain the electron. It didn't pull it away, it's just sharing unequally. So it creates a little negative. This Cl feels this pair more than this H. So my friends in chemistry, we created, okay, a polar bond, sharing electrons unequally. Why is it different? This side's a little positive. Why is this side a little positive? Someone tell me in their own words. There's less what there? Right. So we call it, because there's missing charge that should be there, we call it a little bit of partial positive. Because it's got more electrons here, it's a little negative. There's poles, and that's a polar bond. Okay? Now the molecule, and I drew it like this yesterday for a reason. A molecule considers all the bonds in the molecule. Again, I'm talking about molecule, not ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are crystals. A molecule, like you learned in September, remember this? Remember this stuff? Here's a molecule. I have a little circle here, and then I have a red circle. And these are two different what? Atoms making an individual particle. And we learn in September, even though my circle should be the same, these are two molecules, two different elements. This is a particle. When I have a molecule of HCl, there's one H and one Cl. That's the particle. That's a molecule. We 
you write NaCl for salt, that's just the lowest ratio of ions. It's not a molecule. It's a crystal. In fact, because these make molecules, this is important. Pick your head up now. We call covalent compounds molecular compounds because they make these particles. Okay? Now, continue on. What does polar molecule mean? A polar molecule means that if you look at the entire molecule, let me draw it here, you're going to have more negatives on one side than the other. There's an unequal distribution of electrons. Yeah? Yes? Yes. Now, it doesn't mean there's no electrons here. It just means there's an electron-rich area on one side of the particle. The particles can be big. You have proteins that have thousands of atoms, and you can have small molecules that have two. But if I've got more electrons on this side, this side of the particle will be negative. This side will be positive. It has important implications. Our body is made up of water. It's the universal solvent. It's able to deal and work with many different compounds because water, as we're learning, has a negative side and a positive side. It's a polar molecule. So it can attract the positive end of polar molecules and the negative. By the way, what do we ingest? We're consumers, aren't we? Don't we take in carbohydrates and sugars? They're polar. If we don't attract them in our bodies, we don't have homeostasis. We don't get energy, right? The plants in photosynthesis create the energy. We consume it. Well, we need water to dissolve it. Remember the famous boyfriends, those molecule ion attractions? What do we need in our neurons? We need Na plus and Cl negative to what? To have electricity flow through our bodies. If we don't have ions dissolved in those famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend attractions, there's no life. There's no homeostasis. There's no way for us to communicate to our brain, to our muscle. I want to run. I send an electrical impulse. How do we conduct electricity? Free moving ions. How do the ions get free in our body? The water's got to pull them apart. But wait a minute. There's a positive ion and there's a negative ion. So polarity is important because without polarity, there is no life. If water wasn't polar, there would be no life. The meaning of life, my friends, is right here. OK, let's do it. So when I consider a polar molecule to be a negative side and a positive side, who creates this unequal distribution of electrons? Who creates an unequal distribution of electrons? Polar bonds. So to be a polar molecule, or not to be, that's the question that Shakespeare did not ask, but to be a polar mo molecule, you must have a polar bond. You must have at least one that creates an unequal sharing in the molecule. Now, most times you have more than one. So when you have more than one bond, you have to consider the shape. And this is the most difficult part. This is what I was trying to do yesterday. If you can think of the shape, you can answer the question of the polarity of the molecule. So if I have a polar bond, that does not mean the molecule is always polar. I can have polar bonds, and the molecule be nonpolar. I can be, have polar bonds and be polar. OK, let me give you an example. Okay. Let me give you an example. Let's scroll down. And you were doing these yesterday. Let's look at CH4. All right? We have methane. And this is the one in your labs, and we'll see the same ones over. Carbon has how many valence electrons? Or four. OK? Hydrogen has two. So you can see that carbon has the what? Stable octet. Now, let me ask you a question. We're going to talk about the polarity of this molecule. Is this molecule polar? I say, is this polar? You say, is it a molecule or bonds? You got to answer. So is this polar? What do you say to me? In your molecules or bonds, Mr. Brodsky, is this polar? OK, so emphatic. You got to calm down. OK? So the question is, do I have polar bonds? Am I sharing electrons unequally that it creates a negative and positive side? Do I have two different nonmetals? Yes. Don't they have two different electronegativities? Yes. So is this, are these polar bonds? Yes. yes, the bonds are polar. So the first check is you have polar bonds. So that's the first check. It's the first requirement. The second one is we have to see if the molecule is symmetrical. And this is what I was after yesterday. It looks flat on the screen. 
And we have to go from the flat screen to what it really looks like. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how electrons actually repel themselves into these shapes. If you can see the three-dimensionality of these shapes, you can better answer the next question. So let's take, I'm using argon, no big deal. And when it's empty, it's what? When it's empty, it's argon. Okay. <laughs> no, that wasn't funny, but that's, what, that's what's funny about it. All right. What color is this? I have no idea. Black. It's green. Wow. <laughs> Maybe in the light it does. Oh, brown. Is it green? Brown. brown. Darn it, I don't want brown. But in any case, I, I'm, I'm trying to pick the same colors. Okay, put that to the side. This, so this represents a pair of electrons from the central atom. So this would be the electrons that H is bonded to. Okay? Uh, this looks like the same color, but it looks the same. Uh, let's try to make the same colors here. You're gonna, you're gonna have to help me. No. You're gonna have to really help me. I want to see you two want me to? Oh my God! Religious group in here. In it's stereo. Okay. okay. I got two greens. All right. I can do this. I think they're green. All right, they're green. It has definitely, it's definitely been noticed they're green. Okay. I need some more greens. Okay, I don't. These are two greens. There's two browns. Are these two browns? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll go with brown. So we've got another brown. Uh, now it's red. We're going to give up on these colors. <laughs> All right. Now, if I put two electrons together, how do you think they're going to repel each other? Now, these are pairs of electrons from the central atom. How do you think they repair themselves? Repel themselves into what shape do you think? If I put two atoms together, the electrons repel themselves into what shape? Always, two things always become one shape. As I try to tie these, octagon, not quite, <laughs> close, but not really. Two things, no matter what they are, always make a line. And a fancy way to say it, pinky up, is linear. So your first shape, two things bonded together, would be linear. Like HCl would be linear. I don't care if the H is on top, Cl is on the bottom. It doesn't matter. OK, now, let's put three things together. I got now, I had brown, but I have no idea. Maybe it's red. Who cares? At this point, I'm giving up. Little guy. That's a red again, right? I have no idea. I'm really good at the Rubik's Cubing, being that I'm colorblind. It's always finished for me. <laughs> Done! <laughs> I see how your clothes in the morning. Did I do okay today? Yeah. All right, I lucked it out so I wouldn't show this working at home. Uh, I, I dressed in the dark, too, which is weird. The light, the light's not even see the color anyway, so. Everyone's sleeping when I, when I get up. This is green? No, who cares? No, red, right? Can you tell I'm reddish green color blonde? Yes, you can. All right, so I got three reds and one brown? I have no idea. Okay, so this is called trigonal planar. Now, we're not responsible for the shape, but three electrons repel themselves into a plane, a triangle in the same plane. Okay, that's what this looks like. This is trigonal planar. Now, it's not part of our course, but that's one shape. So if you had three electrons, they repel themselves into these shapes. It's called VSEPR theory. You're not responsible for that either, but you're responsible for the following. If I have four pairs of electrons around the central atom, it's going to make this shape. No? Actually, it's got a famous name. Here is an example of it, OK? It is called a four-sided object, and we call it a tetrahedron, OK? This is a tetrahedron, OK? And it doesn't fit quite, but that's a tetrahedron. So we call it a tetrahedral. Tetra means four. So you notice, hard, maybe it's hard to see, but this is the same structure. Four balloons repel themselves into a tetrahedral shape. 
The top balloon is pushing the other three down. If the top balloon wasn't there pushing it down, what do you think the shape would be? Right. You're understanding. It would look like this, but putting a balloon on top, it repels the other pairs down. So the electron pairs give the shape. Now, we write it this way, right? But really, it's this. There's another way to write it, and I'll show you. And it's just a way of understanding the shape. Watch. I'm going to write this other way. I'll put a C, the C's in the middle. So I've got an H coming down. I've got an H coming at you. So I draw a big, thick line. There's an H coming away from you. I'll, let me just try that again. I need to make that better angle. So I've got an H coming at you. So we do a thick triangle to show it's coming at you. That doesn't fool anybody, does it? OK, and then you have a dotted line, which means it's going behind you. And then you have one on top. <laughs> and that's one way of showing it. And that's what I was trying to show you with the what at home yesterday. Grapes. Yeah, the no, grapes that make this shape. They repel themselves into the tetrahedral shape. Now, for me, Sagrowski, it looks pretty flat to me. It's because you're doing this. Here's a tetrahedral. When you look at it this way, here's what you're doing. I'll do it for the camera. You look at it this way, you see one top, one bottom. Watch. You're thinking of it flattened. One top, one bottom, left and right. But it doesn't exist this way. It exists like this. Is this symmetrical? Is this symmetrical? It's the same all the way around. So is this. You can look at it that way. Now, if it's the same all the way around, that means the polar bonds are the same all the way around. And here's a weird statement I'm going to make. If the polar bonds are the same way all the way around, that means the unequal sharing is the same way all around. Here's the weird statement. The unequalness in the sharing of electrons is equal in all directions. We are equal in the unequalness in all directions. Where's the poles? Where's the negative side? If my polar bonds are in all directions, and the polar bonds are the same, and I'm sharing unequal, in all directions. Where is there another side that's different? Is there? No. So we say that the polar bonds cancel themselves out and that this is a nonpolar molecule with polar bonds. So you've got to identify the symmetry. Is the same all the way around? Yes. So it's symmetrical. What's the second thing you have to have to be polar bond? You, you have to be asymmetrical. Right? There it is. You must be asymmetrical. But this is symmetrical. So, the, so where is the negative and positive? Positive. On the outside, it's all the same because of the symmetry. Does that make sense? OK. Now, what if I change it up? What if I do this? Take this H away and put a CL. Now, of course, I have to add my dots. Take one of these off and add a CL. Not that one. Did that, this come off? This one come off? I'm going to get off though, okay? Add a CL. Is it the same way all the way around? No, it's not. In fact, chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon, so the chlorine pulls the electrons up. The density of all these electrons come up. This is more electronegative. So this thing is pulling electrons up. Think of it this. Think, don't think this. Think this. So the negative side is right here. The positive side is right here. These electrons and these bonds got pulled away from this chlorine. So you've made a negative side of the molecule. To be a polar molecule, you need, must have polar bonds. Have it. This is not the same way all the way around. So this, this side's different. Negative, positive, polar molecule. Now, what if I did this? And this is tricky because it looks like, what if I put, get rid of another H here? And put a CL here. If you thought the molecule was planar like this, doesn't this look symmetrical? Got two here and two here. That looks symmetrical, doesn't it? So this looks like this molecule may be what? Maybe polar or nonpolar. It looks like that this may be symmetrical. Does it look symmetrical? This is the same on this side. This is the same on this side, right? So you may say, hey, 
this is nonpolar because it's symmetrical. But wait a minute, it's not flat, is it? It's this structure, right? Put the chlorine up here, watch. Let me try to do it, I can do it. That's what you're doing, see that? They're flattening it out. So let's make this one chlorine. Is this symmetrical? No, it's not. As written, you can fool yourself that it is. This is this structure. This is two-dimensional. This is not the same way all the way around. These two chlorines are what? Are more electronegative. They pull the electrons in, so this would be the negative side of the bond. This is polar. The only way for this to be nonpolar, if they're all H's or all what? CL's. You have to have the same thing all the way around for them to cancel out and be nonpolar. This is polar. Don't get fooled by this. Okay? Let's look at water, my friends, in chemistry. Okay, check out water. Water is an O in the middle, two lone pairs. And I'm going to draw it two ways. And both ways are acceptable. Six valence electrons. Here comes my H's. H brings one to the table. Another H brings one to the table. Uh, I've got my H's over here. Here we go, party people. And I don't know. Stop here. Now, you know water is polar. It's the reason why we live. But if you write it this way, you may do what? Think you're dealing with a symmetrical compound. This is what I said yesterday. Does this have lone pairs on top? What's it going to do to this bond? Push it down. But if you don't understand that, what's the shape of just the electrons? What's the shape of just the electrons? Tetrahedral, right? Christmas, I'm dropping my atoms. Look, isn't this a tetrahedral? Watch. I have two lone pairs. Isn't this really a tetrahedral? But if I have two lone pairs, the two lone pairs still are in this position. Water is bent because these two lone pairs bend it downward. Now the problem is you can write it flat, right? Watch. Can I make this look like it's flat? Right. You may write it that way, but you have to think three-dimensionally. There's four pairs around. It's not flat. You can write it that way and be confused to think that it is very symmetrical. And I can do this at some point. Here we go. But it's not. Pick any two sides. It's bent. We call it a bent shape. And because of that, the two very electronegative polar bonds, oxygen, this right here, pulls the electrons in closer. That means all the electron densities on this side, and the oxygen end is the negative end of the molecule. OK? Now, let me give you another example. And we're almost done today. Let me give you CO2. We did this yesterday. CO2 looks like this. Two pairs of electrons in an O. Two pairs of electrons in an O. Lone pairs. What shape is this? What shape is this? Are there four pairs of electrons bending it down at the tetrahedral shape? You only have really what? Two? Is there any electrons on top bending it down? No, so it stays what? Linear. And because CO2 is linear, it's nonpolar. Okay? Let me show you an animation that hopefully drives this home. Okay? Take this out, pour this in. Okay? And here we go. Okay? Now, check this out. Once my smart board. What I have here is three pairs of electrons. Okay? And I'm going to rotate them. You have to be able to rotate them. You have to be able to understand the geometry. Here we go. Watch. Let's get rid of these bonds. Okay. One lone pair. Two lone pairs. Three pairs. What's that shape? Trigonal. Planar, right? Okay. Let's remove these all. Let's do our four bonds. What shape is this, guys? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. 
Let's remove one. What do you get? Try going a planar. Let's add a lone pair. Isn't this really a tetrahedral? What, what's keeping it pointed down? The what? Right, take away the lone pair. It becomes what? Symmetrical. But you add a lone pair. It's a top of a three-sided what? Pyramid. Let's take one of these ones away. It's two lone pairs. Two bonds. What is this that I just draw? What has four pairs of electrons? What did I just draw? Water, correct. Water has two lone pairs, and they bend it what? Downward. And it's not straight. You may, you may write it this way, right? You may write it this way, right? But don't be fooled. It really is bent, and by being bent, that makes water asymmetrical. And being asymmetrical means that water can be polar. Okay, homework. You have six structures to draw and identify the bonds, the what? Polarity of the bonds and polarity of the molecule. Did that help a little bit? Okay, you have to think three dimensions, not flat on the page. I may not be in tomorrow. Tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a video that goes over this, or I probably will connect with you for 20 minutes or so. The rest of the time is to continue with the lab. Now, I know some people are not doing it. In the lab, I want you to build the structure as you make the what? Lewis dot diagram. Why do I make you build the structure? So you can see the shape, so you can identify the polarity. Have a great day. I appreciate you guys working with me. Thank you. I right, see you have a great weekend. I hope you're back. We'll see you Sure. Sarah, 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 put down there. And it's in the lobby for discussion.